In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have re rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. A spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard one speaking to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. On the hand of their Lord. 
on the hand of her mistress. So are our eyes on the Lord our God, till he show us his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all too full is our soul. With the scorn of the rich, the disdain of the proud, our eyes are on the Lord till he shall. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, considering the exceptional character of the revelations, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded they said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being worked by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? and they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And Jesus could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. And then he went about among the villages teaching the gospel of the Lord. A few weeks ago, when our premier unveiled the road to green 
he set metrics, certain things that had to be met for each new phase of the road to green to take effect. As you're aware, the first one was met, and then the second one, and we're looking forward now to what we expect will be the third and the final one, which according to what we have been told will take effect when at least 75% of those eligible will have received their second shot of an approved vaccine for COVID-19. And we're about halfway there as of yesterday. In light of that, I want to look ahead to uh, kind of pre-warn you about some changes that will probably be coming. I do this with the caveat that I have no special connections in the Premier's office, and I do not read the future, but I look at what he has told us and what I expect it will mean for us, and when the mandatory order finally ceases, we'll know for so certain if what I'm suggesting now will have to be adjusted or not. We have been under a mandatory order since mid-March, a year and a half ago. And our expectation is that once we enter the final phase of green, that that mandatory order will not be renewed, as has been done every two weeks, because that's all our legislation allows, two weeks of such an intrusion of the government into our lives as a mandatory order is. So if it ceases, that basically means there will be no more guidelines directing what we can and can't do at church than were there prior to the beginning of our first mandatory order in this pandemic. The first thing that you will notice is that there will no longer be a requirement to register in order to come to church or anywhere else for that matter. At this point, I want to thank all of you who've been so patient and faithful with the process of our registering. It's not perfect, but we try to make it as easy as possible and as unobtrusive as possible. And people, you've all been very cooperative with that, and I'm very grateful for that. I also want to thank Joe and Teresa, our secretaries, who are the person, Joe, on the keyboard, if you email, or Teresa on the phone twice a week, letting those know who can come to the Novena Mass or to any of the other weekend Masses. This has been going on week in, week out, without a break, and I'm very grateful to them for that. Once you park wherever you wish, which has not been restricted, you will be free to come into any door of the church. Once the mandatory order ceases, we will again unlock the side doors, as well as the two that are always have been unlocked, and you will be free to enter or exit by any of those doors. If we're required to put more strength to the foundation on this side, <laughs> I'm expecting that the shift of bodies that went from here over there might take a move back this way, but one doesn't know for sure until that happens. But seriously, you'll be free to come in and use any door. When you come in, there will be holy water available. You're free to use it. You're free not to use it. If you're not comfortable, don't use it. Or maybe just make sort of a dry sign of the cross when you enter into the church. We will also continue to keep the um, spraying devices that are here at each door, keep them stocked so that those who wish to use them are certainly free to use them. In fact, we have more now than we had, but they've been here, I believe, since about the year 2002 with the H1N1 uh, pandemic, although 
in my memory, that was much less of a pandemic than this one was. But anyway, they've been here that long and will continue to be there if you wish to use them. When you come into the church, there will no longer be limits on how many people are allowed in the church except what the fire marshal has already said, and that for this church is 498 persons in the main sanctuary of the church. Now, you're about 100 here tonight. 95 to 100 generally is what is coming, so we won't have to worry too much, only Christmas Eve, that we might uh, make fire marshals nervous. So there will be no more limitations that way. The mandatory order won't exist, so there will be no limitations on how far you have to keep from people. Hence, we will put aside the green please sit here notices. We won't throw them out because things can change, and we'll keep them ready in case a new mandatory order or new problems arise. I do ask that you, when this happens, you try to be considerate because some people will be more nervous than others. Many of us, me included, have had two shots, but maybe some of us can't or for whatever reasons will not have been vaccinated or the vaccinations may not work very well with us. And so, it's still important that we have a certain Christian charity and understanding of others. If someone says, I'd prefer you to sit another seat up, well, if there's space, uh, try to do that. It, it's, it's, it's the uh, Christian way we are a community and we try to support each other and recognize that different people were coming out of uh, a very major event that none of us has seen the like of in our lives. And so people have reacted differently to it, and that will continue, I suspect, for some time. It's the same with masks. Once the mandatory order ceases, it will no longer be required to wear a mask anywhere, unless they do something other than what we've been led to expect. That doesn't mean that you are forbidden to wear masks. If you're more comfortable to wear a mask, feel free to do so. And again, I would ask great charity on the part of all of us, not to go to someone and say, what are you doing with that mask still on? You don't need to wear that thing. A smile at them, or hi there, or something like that. Um, so that's all I'm going to say this week. Next week, I'll speak a bit about what will be happening during the celebration of the mass. Again, I'm trying to do this recognizing that the mandatory order still binds us, and until it is um, dismandated, that's not a correct legal term, but until it is dissolved, it will continue to bind us, and should we be informed of changes from what we've been led to expect, then of course we will follow those as we have tried all along to follow and, and maintain the mandatory order in this church. And so I just encourage you as you're in your own situations to continue to prepare yourself for that. And if you've not yet had a chance for the vaccination, well, I encourage you to give that a thought too because the sooner we hit 75% of us, uh, those eligible, then the sooner we can see these changes come into effect. And much more importantly, the sooner we can feel safe or at least safer as a community and as a city and as a province. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, 
died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Together we place all of our needs and all of our prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, who is often the only voice speaking for the poor and for refugees and victims of the whole world, while some nations and the wealthy seek only to increase their power, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Christian and all the Canadian bishops, as they try to keep the country's focus on truth and reconciliation, as they work with Aboriginal peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Aboriginal people, as they try to educate us about the terrible cost of the policy of assimilation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our relatives and friends in the United States, as they celebrate their national holiday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of all who are undertaking travel again, and for happy and safe reunions of families, and for healing prayers and rituals among those who will finally bury family members who have died during the past year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For anyone in need of our prayers today, especially those whose physical or mental health has declined during the long isolation and separations during the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Donald Richardson, John Ford, that they will be welcomed into Jesus' loving embrace we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all of your blessings. We bring all of our needs and our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them and to answer them through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And please be seated as our altar is prepared.
and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For we know that it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, Join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Teresa Como, Harold Seaman, Roma Ritchie, William and Mabel Byrne, Thomas Enright, Doreen Thomas, Connie English, and Marie Flynn. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And after receiving Holy Communion, go in the peace of Christ.